Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is an inducer motor out of a condensing 90% efficient gas furnace and the pressure switch. Now, what we're really looking at here is why does the pressure switch trip when you have a condensate that's backing up? All right, so you could have a pressure switch that's two port like this. You could have one that's a single port like this, or or multiple singles. You could have one like this. You could have uh, pressure switches that are combined with tubes right next to each other. So the reason that you have a pressure tube going to the condensate line of a 90% efficient gas furnace is this heat exchanger right back here. Okay, This is where you have the inducer motor hooked up right here. This connects to the heat exchanger. All right, and here's your tube for your pressure switch. You can see it follows from here all the way over to here. So these multi-poise furnaces could be located in, in this way where it would be like vertical this way, or it could be horizontal and uh, you could have the supply going that way. Okay, it could be like this, which in case, in that case, you could switch this to here. This one is out of a Bryant Carrier Pain furnace, all right? But they're all gonna be basically um, be hooked up in the same manner. The reason that they're checking for the condensate buildup is this is the main drain right here, and this drains out. Okay, this goes to a condensate trap. If you look back here, all right, so you see the smaller hole above the large hole? All right, that is the condensate tube that goes to the pressure switch. So if, it, if the water fills up this heat exchanger, okay, and comes up this way, past that port, then the pressure switch will not be getting any pressure to it. So just remember why the pressure switch is actually checking for excessive condensate buildup. And it's because if this port is not draining over to the trap, then this port is likely not draining to the trap. And then that means that you're going to have excessive buildup in the inducer motor housing. And then that will end up rising the water up inside of here. And then the wheel the inducer motor wheel will actually be submerged in water and that will end up breaking the inducer motor itself. Okay, and this part of the pressure switch, that will go to right here, the pressure tube connected to the combustion chamber as well as possibly the gas valve. Just remember that this pressure switch will not read the negative pressure from the inducer motor running if this is filled up with water because your inducer motor is basically coming from here and then this is where you're reading it at. Okay, this is the back of the inducer motor and your negative pressure is coming from right in here. Okay, and it's coming in here and that's where your pressure switch is receiving that negative pressure going to the pressure switch. If the water level is too high, then it will not read this negative pressure. All right, so just remember that the water during the, say, the middle of winter while the furnace is running is being created during the combustion process. So the furnace is actually gaining an extra 10% of efficiency or, or more out of the water vapor um, during the combustion process. It's actually draining that water through a secondary heat exchanger, and then it drains from here out of the furnace, and that's where you end up having a problem is if you, say, don't drain uh, the water properly, all right? You want to make sure you also that you have trap right here installed. Uh, so this water won't be able to drain out of the furnace in a negative pressure zone unless you have water weight, okay, in a trap. So that's what the point of having these traps are. Now, by the pure fact of having a trap means that, that over time the water can be stagnant inside and end up um, clogging up. So. So you want to go ahead and clean these out, all right? You always make sure that your pressure tube is disconnected from your pressure switch before you're applying any, um, like an air compressor or anything, to these uh, traps and the condensate lines. You want to make sure as well that the condensate line that's attached to the trap is able to go downwards away from the furnace at, at about a quarter inch of pitch per foot or more uh, and then get to a drain, all right? So uh, that's, that's that. So I just wanted to to show you that and uh, like I said each furnace will have different ways of draining and pressure switches you might have multiple pressure switches maybe a pressure switch going to the inducer housing and then another one going directly to the trap port okay you have a, a few different scenarios but that's the main gist of it okay hope you enjoyed yourself we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel